Welcome to the Caribbean Edge Kids. We are so happy you're joining us for our launch of Reggae Meets Black History Month. And we are happy to say yesterday was Bob Marley's birthday. So happy birthday to the king of reggae who has given Jamaica its people so much to be thankful for. And today I have a lovely panel lined up for you. We have Auntie Sophie, of course. Hi, Auntie Sophie. We also have our author, Kim, who is joining us. And we have a beautiful singer. Her name is Dakara Rose, making her debut on the Caribbean Edge Kids. And of course, we have our brilliant readers. We have Kyle, CJ, and Michael. So welcome everyone to a wonderful Sunday afternoon. The picnic them ready for or no. And we're gonna have some little patwa in there because Kim I heard is the expert pump patwa. She did over the lot of mercy. So we're gonna kick off with Michael, who is gonna start with reading for us. Welcome, Michael. Tell us about you. How old are you, Michael? I'm 11 years old. 11 years old. And I know you're gonna play the drums for us as well. Yes, I am. Yes. So tell us, I understand you, ha uh, you have your blue belt in Taekwondo? Uh, yes. So you like Taekwondo? Mm -hmm. Yes. What does that teach you? What are you learning there? Discipline and self-defense. Self-defense. Very important in life. And you're also on the youth cricket team? Yes, I am. Yes. Wow. We don't hear that term very often overseas in America, unless you're in the Caribbean community. And you are also the drummer at your church. You play tennis, swim, and you like bowling. You love math. And what's your future career? Um, I want to be a photographer and an employee in Microsoft. Beautiful. Well, we wish you luck with your career. So tell us what you're reading for us and take us away. Um, I'll be reading the, um, what's it called again? The, set, the National Heroes of Jamaica. Um, George William Gordon was a free colored landowner and an associate of Bogle. As a member of the House of Parliament, he used his position to highlight the sufferings of the people and to make a plea of change. Thank you. Um, Samuel Sharp was born in 1801 in Montego Bay. He grew up uh, as a house slave, Samuel had special responsibilities, one of which was to take the job slaves, those hired out to others to work. While carrying out his daily duties, he became disgruntled with the way in which slaves were treated. He himself included, he wanted to be free. Marcus Garvey, the last of 11 children, was born in St. Anne's Bay on August 17, 1887. Garvey moved to Kingston, where he worked as a government printing, he worked at the government printing office. He started the United Negro Improvement Association and encouraged self-government for Black people worldwide, self-help, economic projects, protest against racial discrimination, and cultural activities. Alexander Bustamante was born William Alexander Clark in Hanover on February 24th, 1884. He traveled across Latin America 
and the Mediterranean, Mediterranean beginning at the point his trade union involvement. When he returned to Jamaica in 1934, he had a new name, Ali, Ali Jando Bustamante. Norman Man Manley was born at Manchester on July 4th, 1893 to Thomas Albert Samuel Manley, a planter and producer and Margaret Ann Sher Shirley, a small pen, keep pen keeper for Blenheim, Hanover. Manley was one of four children. He had two, um, he had two sisters, Vera and Merle, and one brother, Roy, who was killed in the First World War. At age 16, his father died, leaving the family with limited resources. The end. Thank you so much, Michael. We appreciate that. I, I need to ask you this. Did you ever think of um, looking up these heroes before and reading for them, or this was prepared for today's show? It was paired for today. Thank you. Job well done. One of the things that we enjoy about that is that so many people don't know the history and culture that comes from the Caribbean and from Jamaica. So young man, you did an awesome job by selecting our national heroes and reading about them today. So you're sharing that knowledge, not only with yourself, but the rest of the world. Thank you so much. Welcome. And Mr. CJ, looking all cute today. What's going on over there, CJ? Who are you today? Black Panther. You're the Black Panther. So tell us why you chose that character. Because he, he inspires a lot of Black people, including me. Awesome. So tell us about CJ. What do you like to do for fun? Take walks, play my tablet, all kinds of stuff. Okay. I love walking too, but I need to do it a lot more. <laughs> and what do you want to be when you grow up? An astronaut. An astronaut. Oh my God, what an amazing young man. So CJ, what do you have planned for us? Tell us. Let's see your, your mask, everything. Let's see your costume. Beautiful. All right, take us away. Tell us what you have in store for us. Hello, everyone. I'm going to tell you about the Black Panther actor today. He, Travis Baldwin, was an African American actor that inspired a lot of black people. On this last movie, he didn't tell anyone that he was sick. But when he was alive, he was kind, caring, hardworking, and strong. I'm really sorry that he died. Wakanda forever. I love it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Wakanda forever, yes. It shook the world to know that he was sick because he was such an awesome actor and more important, such an awesome man that gave back. So you really picked an inspirational character that represents not only being black, but being kind and being generous um, with his talents and his experience with the world. He touched so many lives and I'm so glad he touched your CJ. And thank you for choosing his character and representing him so well today. You're beautiful you. and we appreciate you. <laughs> Such an amazing kids. I mean, they just picked all these characters for us. Oh my gosh. Kyle Edwards, welcome back to the Caribbean Edge. And your mom is Cam, <laughs> who is also an author and on the show today. So tell us about you, Kyle. What do you enjoy doing? Let the world know what inspires you. 
Okay, um, so I'm Kyle and like, I mean, I just wanted to uh, read about um, a book who, uh, a, who, the book is about someone who is very inspiring and who believes in what, like believes in their talent and that really encourages me because um, I have a lot of things that I want to be when I grow up and I just need some encouragement and this book kind of helps with that. Uh, so um, the book I'm going to read is it, um, I Am a Promise uh, and it's about Shelly Ann Fraser. So um, I'll start. So. So the book starts off, she said, when, when I was a little girl, I dreamed of winning great races, but I was just a teeny tiny thing in this wide wondrous world. As tiny as I was, I was also very fast and I loved to run. So I ran to school, I ran to the shop and I ran like a rocket. I ran to be free. I ran everywhere because that was me. One day, my grandmother saw me running and she called me over. Child. Uh, she said, uh, child, do you know that you are a promise? I looked at her with wide eyes and asked, what kind of promise, Granny? I was very confused. How could I be a promise? A promise is for ice cream on a Sunday. A promise is to keep your friends secrets. How can a person be a promise? But Granny just smiled and answered, don't worry, child. One day you will see. As I grew older and entered big school, I kept running and training hard because that's what I love to do. But now I ran faster than the other girls in the races. I ran faster than everyone in races. I ran like a rocket. I ran to be free. I ran without fear because that was me. As the years went by, things were not always easy for my family. There were times when we struggled to pay the bills. There were times when we went to bed hungry. My mother often wondered how we would manage, how she would manage to take care of us all. Thankfully, we met people along the way who said to me, young lady, you have great promise. We believe in you. We will help you. I'm glad for this. I, I'm glad, I was glad for the help, but I still wonder, what is this promise that they say I have? And why me? As soon, as soon an amazing thing happened. I ran so fast that I was chosen to run in the Olympics for my country, in a land far away. The stadium was filled with people from all over the world. The lights were bright, the cheering was very loud. My heart beat fast. I was so nervous, but my coach said to me, you represent the promise of our country. Go and show the world what that promise is. I strode over the blocks. I readied myself for the start. I thought of all my family and friends who had said I was a promise. It was then I knew I was a promise to my country and to all who have supported me. A promise to myself and to all those who have loved me. A promise to always be the best I can be. The race began. I ran for my country. I ran for my friends. And I ran like a rocket to be free. Most important of all, I ran my best because that was the promise to me. And that's it. The end. <laughs> Thank you so much. What's an inspirational book and what an inspirational young man for selecting that book. I mean, I think a lot of people, if you don't know who Shelley Ann Fraser Price is um, in today's world, <laughs> you have to look her up. Um, she's renowned the fastest female runner in Jamaica. Um, but I don't think a lot of people knew, because I certainly didn't, um, know that she wrote this book. So um, when our Council General, Mr. Oliver Mayer, first read it, 
we were amazed. And then listening to you read it with such a different perspective as well. Every time I hear it, it's just absolutely different, you know, and her inspiration being her grandma and her grandma telling her that she's a promise. And she made that promise into her reality, into her world, and a promise to her country of Jamaica um, to do her best and more important, to do the best for herself. So what a book. And Kyle, we want to know more about you. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're going to have to tell me a little more. So tell me what you want to be when you grow up and, and what do you enjoy doing? Um, so what I do want to be, I want to be a professional soccer player, but also an entrepreneur. But I just want to do those things that are fun and they, I enjoy them. Awesome. Well, you will. I mean, I know your mom, she's such an inspiration to me as well and to others. So you definitely having a good support system helps and having people that motivate and inspire you like Cheryl and Gracia Price certainly adds to that list. So thank you for being awesome. And you're making your mark on TCE kids by reading for other kids so they can see themselves reading too. So thank you. We're gonna have some little fun right here, so. So we're gonna all pull up a little bit. That means we're gonna stop a little bit. And the kids are going to learn some Patwa. So I know that Karia, who is patiently waiting to sing for us today, knows Patwa, so she gonna help us out here. Auntie Sophie certainly knows Patwa. We're gonna test Kim who is married to a Jamaican, but is the worst Patwa speaking person in her household. <laughs> and the kids, always a treat to see what them, they're gonna tell us today. So we're gonna start nice and easy. We're gonna say, and kids, you can unmute yourself right here in case I pick on you. But let's say, Michael. Michael, you know anything in Patwa, tell us. Um, Wagwan. Wagwan. So what does that mean, Michael? Hi, how are you? Like, what are you doing? Yes, it means hi. So Wagwan, Michael. See, with Jamaicans, we're very expressive too. So we like put some oomph into it when we're saying it. So uh, Mr. CJ, Wagwan. Wagwan CJ, you're Irie? Hello. hello? Yes. So another way we say hello is Irie. Do so you can say Irie? No. Irie. Irie. Everything Irie? Yes. So who do you love? I love Tell me someone you love. My dad. I love my mom and my dad and my sister. Okay, so I'm going to, okay, so you would normally say to them, I love you. So we would have said, you'd say, mommy, me love you, you know. Mommy, me love you, you know. Yeah, man, yeah, mommy, me love you. <laughs> and you can't say to your little sister, my sister, me love you. Daddy, me love you. My, my sister, me, me love you. Me love your man. Yeah, man. <laughs> You're doing awesome, CJ, so you can practice, replay this and say, sister, me love you. You walk on daddy, me love you. See? And sister, you can tell me love him, you. Daddy, me love you. You got it. You got it. <laughs> How about you, Kyle? Let's see where Kyle is with us. What words you know, Kyle? Uh... Emma, what were, uh, what were for chat about, eh? What were for chat about, D? See that? So, Daddy must be talking some part in the house. Ah, uh, no, man. It, it, the, uh, the thing on me, eh? The thing the on me. <laughs> the thing on you? <laughs> me know all the parts were. Them can't teach me nothing. nothing them more. can't teach you. You have forgot to teach them. Yeah, man. See that? Sure. We're going to work on mommy too. All right. So let's hear you say this, uh, Kyle. Midday upon Sunday, I read for you now. 
me day of concern, me, me a refrain, you no. Know. See there, yes, job well done. So I'm here on Sunday reading for you, me day up on a Sunday, read for you. Everything I repent, TCE kids. Yeah, man, I <laughs> a little bit because she's over there laughing. Kim, you know we have to pull you in. I know. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, tell me something in English and I'll say it in Patois for you. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Um, okay. I love you like cooked food. <laughs> so do you have any idea how to say that? Yeah, I have a few. So, um, me love you like cook food. <laughs> yes. And then one I like to mess with Kyle about. I always say, "Ooh, you romp with." <laughs> Ooh, yeah, romp with boy. <laughs> See, you're not that bad. No. <laughs> you're doing pretty good. Oh, Auntie Sophie, you're best. Yes. I just stick with the ones that I can do pretty decent. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for having fun. Dakaria. Yes. Yes, with that little elegant voice. Come on, man. Rock out and tell me something. All right. Well, no one with the say. Ah, uh, what are you doing for it today? Well, I'm not saying I'm just sing. I'm going to have some words. I'm going to the kids them to encourage them and make them feel good about themselves. So that's what I'm going to do. See that? So you got the <laughs> sweet voice with the part one, Jesus. I am so excited. Thank you for enjoying this little part of our show with us speaking a little patwa. And I've said it before on the show, I grew up in a household where we didn't really speak patwa. Our English, our language in Jamaica is English. Um, but of course, we love our dialect, we love our culture, we love our history. So it's such a great opportunity to share it with our kids, especially our kids overseas, so that we don't lose that heritage and culture that comes with us being from Jamaica. So thank you very much. So Kim, tell us what you have for us today. We're so glad you're joining us again. Thank you. I'm so excited about um, being a guest again. So the story that I have um, is a story titled, The World Needs Who You Were Made To Be by Joanna Gaines. So. Today is the day for the ride of our lives when a confetti of color will fill up the sky. Plenty of pink, a bounty of blue, in orange, green, and yellow too. We all play a part, both me and you, as we build our very own hot air balloons. We'll gather supplies and make them our own and prepare to take flight into the great unknown. It doesn't take us long to see that we all work so very differently. Some, some of us work alone and some of us work side by side. Some of us are quiet and like to think things through and others prefer to chit chat about all we have to do. Some of us think through every possibility before we jump in and some of us know what we like before we even begin. Sometimes we're scientific and rely on our smarts. Sometimes we're creative and lean into the arts. Some of us are resourceful. We like to work with whatever's on hand. And some of us are extravagant. We like to go big whenever we can. Some of us are teachers and share what we know but all of us are learners, together is how we grow. So by now you can see how we all work so very differently. We've done our very best and now it's time to fly. See how beautiful it can be when our differences share the same sky. 
We may not look or work or think the same, but we all have an important part to play. All of us can be kind, compassionate, and gracious. All of us can be helpful, considerate, and courageous. So remember who you are. This is your life to live. Don't ever hold back. You have so much to give. You're one of a kind, and it's so clear to see the world needs who you were made to be. The end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I especially love the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who we are meant to be. That's who we should represent every single day. Such yeah. an important message for kids because we need these stories. We need these inspirations and we need them at a young age. Sometimes we yes. don't get inspired till later on in life. So thank you for selecting that. And Kim, tell us why you started writing. Tell us about you. Okay, because I just wanted to um, empower and encourage children and um, just to show them that they have value. And just like the book was saying that um, the world needs what you have. Um, and it's okay um, to be different. The world would be so boring if we were all the same. And, um, you know, the world is so much vibrant and beautiful when we share our talents. And I wanted to start writing for small children to always remind them of that and to embrace their differences and never compare themselves because guess what? We all have value. We all are special and we all have something to give. Um, and we're here to impact the world. And most importantly, we're all loved and we are, and we all matter. <laughs> Oh, thank you. You're so beautiful. And I'm thankful that you started writing and for the reasons you started doing it too, because you're making such a change for our young children. Thank you. And you have to tell us where we can find you. Okay. I, um, you can find me, um, my books at barnesandnobles.com, or you can head on over to my website at uh, kimlacricia.com and you can purchase, um, my books as well as uh, other books um, that I, I find empower others. I love to um, celebrate um, other people. So I do have other books on the site that celebrate diversity um, and it just celebrates the lives of others and encourages others, so. Thank you. And it was so happy one of the young readers last week read one of your books on the show. <laughs> <laughs> So big up yourself, Kim. You are going with teams. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And I think Michael's getting ready to do the drums for us, right, Michael? Yes. 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 So Michael, get ready for us. We're ready for you. So Michael has a special treat. He's a drummer in his church and he is a natural drummer. So let's see what he has for us.
Groove Everything, our first drummer on the Caribbean X Kids, and you rocked it. I see mommy adjusting the camera there. Let's get our little drummer back here. Michael! Oh my gosh, I heard you were a natural, but oh my God, tell us how you got into drumming. We have to know about you. <laughs> well, um, at school, I always like to play play the drums on, on the pencil. So uh, I asked my mom to, uh, to do drumming lessons and now I'm here. Well, you certainly ask your mom the right question, right? To get involved in drumming and to have parents that support your dream is also absolutely important. But you rocked it, young man, 11 years old. I love your song, Choice. Mr. Carl Rose was back there dancing up a storm and singing. And Mr. CJ even had his eyes closed <laughs> as he tuned in. And Kyle and Kim were rocking, not to mention Auntie Sophie. She was trying to sing back there. One day she gonna have to sing for it. And the queen knows she can't sing. <laughs> So, Auntie Sophie, what do you think of our readers, our singers, and take us away? Auntie Dawn, as usual, I am the one that's being treated each and every <laughs> Sunday. I am totally blown away today. I thank you guys for taking the time to share with us. We appreciate you. And Auntie Dawn, I had a little education today. I had some inspiration. I got some motivation. And mm -hmm. I learned from Miss Kim that every single child matters. You're all gifted in different ways. And each of you are integral to making it, making a com to complete this entire world. We all couldn't be the same. And all, every single person matters. Isn't that amazing? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Auntie Dawn, I am, I am loving this. Loving this. Thank you for having me. <laughs> we love you, Auntie Sophie. And big shout out to your mom too, who is, an, I know, a number one fan of the show. Oh. So moms, happy Sunday. <laughs> Take us away, Auntie Sophie. Auntie Sophie, I just love you because you bring a fl such a flavor to the Caribbean edge with storytelling every week for the kids and just preserving that rich culture and heritage that we both love so much every week with the way you do it. Thank you for being our Auntie Sophie and for sharing yourself with the world so graciously every Sunday. Thank you, my dear. It is indeed my pleasure. So now, speaking of heritage and our culture, every Sunday I wear my bandana with pride and to bring you a little piece of my island as we so fittingly share now in Black History Month. Everybody chose their character. We had people who are sharing, people who are impacted their lives. Guess what? Brother and Nancy impact our life too in Jamaica and the Caribbean. <laughs> so I, for those people who are not aware of um, Anansi, he's a character in our folklore, folklore character. And Anansi's stories were originated in West Africa. They were brought to Jamaica and other parts of the New World by Ashanti slaves. And they were handed down orally through generations. Now Anansi exists as a spider, a man, or a combination of the two. But we know that Anansi is no goody two shoes. He's not like CJ's hero, but we still find Anansi to be fun. He is a greedy, lazy, inventive trickster, very cunning and smart in the extreme. Now, Anansi loves a joke. And when he's not sleeping, he's always up to something. And boy, does he love food. So let's find out what Anansi is up to today. This story is Anansi and the Turtle. Now, once there lived a spider called Anansi. He was a very greedy spider and did not like sharing any of his things with others. One day, he collected some lovely yams from his garden and he cooked them with utmost care. 
the delicious smell of the yams made Anansi hungrier. He somehow managed to wait till lunchtime. Just as he sat down to consume his delicious meal, he heard a knock at his door. Anansi was irritated and opened the door hurriedly. It was the turtle standing at the door. He has been traveling for a very long time and looked very tired and hungry. Hello, Anansi. What are you cooking? I smell something really delicious, the turtle said. Oh, I have cooked some yams for lunch, Anansi said reluctantly. Oh, can I please stay for lunch? I am hungry and tired of all the traveling, the turtle said. And Nancy was not willing to share his food with the turtle, but it was a custom in the country to share food with visitors who came during lunch or dinner hours. So Anansi could not refuse. Nevertheless, he was determined not to share his delicious yams with the turtle. Please have a seat and enjoy your meal, Anansi said to the turtle. Both of them sat down on the chairs. The turtle was about to help himself to a share of the yam when Anansi suddenly stopped him. Don't you know that you must clean your hands before you touch your meal? Please wash your hands before you eat, Anansi instructed the turtle. The turtle took a look at his hands and saw that they were full of dirt as he had been walking for a long time. So he went to a nearby river and returned after washing his hands. And Nancy had already started his meal. The yams were getting really cold. So I started my lunch. Please join me, Anansi said. However, even this time, when the turtle reached for his meal, Anansi stopped him by giving him the same reason. The poor turtle saw that his hands had become dirty once again as he had walked back from the river to the house. The turtle was very hungry and tired by now, but he still went back to the river to wash his hands. This time he was determined not to let his hands get dirty. He was careful and he walked on the grass to keep his hands clean. By the time he reached the table, Anansi had already finished all the food, except for a morsel that was spared for the turtle. The turtle was angry and humiliated. Thank you for your lovely lunch. I would like to invite you over to my place for a meal someday, the turtle said, and he left. A few days had passed and Anansi started thinking about the turtle's invitation. He was tempted to go for a sumptuous meal at the turtle's place. After all, he knew that the turtle was an amazing cook. One day he went at the bank of the river which the turtle had his house and he stood there at dinner time. The turtle saw him and said, Hello, Anansi. Thank you for coming. Please have dinner with me. The turtle invited Anansi inside his house, which was underwater. Anansi could not wait any longer and quickly dived into the water. But alas, he was too light and could not swim deep into the water. Meanwhile, the turtle was ready with the delicious spread. Anansi tried every possible measure to go under the river. He tried a running jump, a belly flop, a high dive, but could not go beneath the surface of the water. Anansi started thinking hard and finally decided to pick up some rocks and put them in the pockets of his jacket. His plan was successful. And this time, Anansi reached straight to the turtle's house after diving underwater. Anansi was impressed to see the delicious spread and was about to dig into the first bite when the turtle stopped him. Dear Anansi, kindly remove your jacket before you touch the food. In our custom, we do not eat with our jackets on, the turtle said. Anansi saw that even the turtle was not wearing his jacket. 
and Nancy reluctantly removed his jacket, which was full of rocks and pebbles. And within no time, he went rushing up to the surface of the water. And Nancy could see the turtle slowly consuming the lovely meal. And Nancy felt sad and slowly climbed out of the water. Now the moral of the story, never try to outsmart someone. You may find that you yourself are the one to be outsmarted. Jack Mandora, me not choose none. The <laughs> end. <laughs> Thank you, Auntie Sophie. CJ, CJ, so excited. <laughs> we end our stories when we tell a Nancy stories. We say, Jack Mandora, me not choose none, which means as I get the story I give you, I don't add nor do I subtract. I give it to you how I got it, passed down orally from generation to generation. And that's my contribution to you from my little country, Jamaica. Happy Black History Month. <laughs> I know. Thank you, Auntie Sophie. And thank you all the viewers that have tuned in today. And remember to share this episode as we continue to invite kids to join us on the Caribbean Edge Kids. So let's switch over to our beautiful Dakara Rose. Tell us about yourself, Dakara. Hi guys, my name is Tonia Ellison, AKA Dakaria Rose. I created that stage name because in Africa, the word Dakarakai, Dakar it means to rejoice. And when I sing and I utilize my voice, I want to bring joy to all who hears it. And the word rose to me, <laughs> symbolizes how the rose that grew from concrete has already been through the struggle. So it symbolizes strength and power. So that is who Dakaria Rose is. Thank you. And tell us what you aspire to be. How old are you? I am 19 years old. I aspire to be not only a singer, I want to be an entertainer and an entrepreneur. I have, I'm now in college at UCF and I'm pursuing my degree in neuropsychology. That degree will be utilized in the aspect where I create my nonprofit organization, which will provide a safe and empowering environment for trauma survivors. So that is just one of the many things that I'm going to do in my future. Thank you so much. You're powerful beyond measure. Such a nice young lady. Thank, you. thank you for joining us. And thanks to your mom as well for sharing us as well. Okay, so what do you have for us today? I know you have an inspirational message. Yes, I'm actually, I'm going to sing my song, Dear Beautiful People first, and then I'm going to give the inspirational message to the youth. Take us away. Okay. One second. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. You're beautiful, one of a kind. Never let anyone steal your shine. You're different, it's who you are. Don't be a replication of someone else. Why not embrace your flaws when God made you who you are? Who you are? I know it's hard sometimes because it feels like the world is against you and it's on your mind, it's weighing on your mind. Dear beautiful people, this is for my God-fearing people. Be different. You're different, stay different. Dear beautiful people, this 
Just for my God-fearing people, be different. You're different. Stay different. Why not be who you are? Don't let the haters tear you down. People don't want to see you doing great. So you have to do even better. Put them in their place. Let them realize that what they have to say is irrelevant. 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 Life can be hard sometimes. But the Lord is always on your side. You might have your loved ones around, but at the end of the day, you face this world alone. Dear beautiful people, this is for my God-fearing people. Be different, you're different. Stay different, dear beautiful people. This is for my God fearing people. Be different, you're different. Stay different. It gets hard at times. It gets hard at times. When the rain falls on you, but the sun shines on you too. You'll see a better day. The tears rolling down your face. God will wipe away, wipe away. God will wipe away. that was said and, and, and it's amazing because no one knows each other on the show except for Kyle and Kim being mom and, <laughs> and son and so you just took everything that every message every book every inspiration today and then your own message about us being beautiful I certainly felt mm -hmm. it and being different like Kim mentioned you know and appreciating who you are so tell us about that song and you wrote that song Yes, I did. I wrote that song when I was probably 16, 15. And it was a time where a lot of kids around me in my, my school group, my classmates, they were very, everyone was trying to be like someone else that they were not. And it just puzzled me because I don't know if it's the culture of like being Jamaican, because a lot of Jamaican people are proud of who they are. So I grew up proud of who I was, who I am. And in me, I just decided I have this gift and I love to write songs. So why not write something that can empower other people? When I wrote this song, I put together a lot of essence from many situations that people are going through. You know, you're beautiful. You may look different. You may society society might not want to accept you, but you don't live for society. 
You live for yourself. You were granted this amazing experience at life and you own it. You like my brothers told me the other day, life is a gift life is a present it might not be wrapped with a bow but it's something to be grateful for and you have to find pride in who you are because this world is going to try to tear you apart and especially it being black history month this is the perfect time to talk about this our melanin our skin is power and i'm going to give it to you as true as possible Growing up in this world, especially America, they're going to try to make you feel bad about your skin. They're going to try to cast you to the side because that's just how the system is up here. But you have to always remember there is nothing wrong with who you are. There is nothing wrong with being Black. It's an amazing privilege and you have history behind your skin. You have so much to be grateful for. And that is why people are going to try to make you feel some type of way about your skin. Kyle, I want to ask you a question. I'm seeing you here. What is something that you struggle with? Because I heard you say that book gives you empowerment. It makes you feel encouraged. Um. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I can be a bit not very uh, confident in myself because sometimes the people around me can be a bit, how do I say, uh, they, they're really good at dragging people down. And mm -hmm. sometimes I kind of feed into that. And But I mean, that, what, what you said really did help because I have to just be proud and happy with how I am and how, and I just sometimes struggle with a lot of insecurity and feeling bad about who I am sometimes and what people say that I am. But I know I shouldn't really feel that way and I should be happy with how, who I am. And yes, people are always going to try to break you down. And as for flaws, no one is perfect you know no one is that perfect image of what to be but you have to know that God spent his time with you you know and you are crafted in such a way where there is nothing wrong with you you just carry on and be strong because at the end of the day everyone might have their piece to say but tell them to take that up with God because he <laughs> made you how he knew you were to be. Yeah. And, and that's and, for everyone. And, and uh, it was such a beautiful message, Dakar. Thank you so much. Beautiful song. And, Thank you. you know, Kyle, thanks for being vulnerable. Thanks for being honest as well. Um, you are impacting so many lives by being here, everyone today. And, you know, in addition to what the Rose has said, you know, surround yourself with the right people and you will see how it changes you, change your mindset every day. And we're living in a wonderful year of hope and just get up every day and empower yourself. Like Dakari said, you know, you're in control of your life no matter who else is around you. And her song is so beautiful because it touches yeah, even yeah. though family is around yeah. you. At the end of the day, you make your life what it's gonna be. So that's why I love this show. We love this show because you have a platform to inspire others despite your own insecurities. And we all have them. So yes, I'm gonna go around with everybody so you can tell us what you wanna say, tell your fans what you wanna say, and please share this episode. Thank you everyone for tuning in. We will start with CJ, our very own little Black Panther. Anything you wanna say in closing, CJ? Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy it, everyone. Oh, well, we enjoyed you. Thank you, CJ. You're an amazing young man. And I'm so glad we had you on the show today. And let's skip over Thank to you. Michael, our drummer. Thank you, Michael. Not only did you pick some national heroes for us today to talk about 
You also did an exceptional job on the drums. I mean, I can't wait to see what you do. So you have to stay in touch with us. Anything you want to say in closing? I just want to say uh, to spread positive vibes. And if someone's being rude to you, just let it go. Because you're all perfect. Not perfect, but you're all fine. Thank you. You're an amazing young man. Thank you. And Kyle? Um, I just feel like if anyone, just like that's why I read the book, if anyone has a dream, no matter how much people like to criticize you for or say how much it won't, how much you're bad at it or how much you struggle in it or any negative stuff, just um, fulfill what you want to fulfill and not what everyone thinks that you should fulfill. And if they think you're not good at something, you don't have to listen to them. Just be proud of who you are and what you do, mainly. And like, that's something that I have struggled with. With I want to be a certain person and people sometimes drag me down with that, but I know I just need to be happy with who I am. And when I'm happy with who I am, I won't, I, I can just uh, ignore what, what people want to say. And that's something good to know, to live by. Thank you like, so much. Words of inspiration. Oh, powerful. All you kids are so powerful. Thank you. And uh, Cam, <laughs> you must be so proud. <laughs> Yes, yes. And just want to kind of just reiterate um, what Dakaria Rose um, said. And yes, that brought tears to my eyes. So beautiful. You are definitely um, anointed. <laughs> definitely. Um, and just um, want to, again, just to encourage everybody, not just the children, um, but the adults too, because even though we know this, we always have to be reminded that um, we are, we're valued. And that's just a recurring theme in everything that I do. Um, I want to impact everybody and allow them to see and know that um, you are one of a kind. You are God's masterpiece. We are all here for, we have a purpose. You have a purpose and a path. And that just to know that, um, again, if we were all alike, the world would be so boring. And what you have inside of you, the world needs it. You are here to bring impact um, to the lives of others and to help others. So just to say, continue to believe in yourself and believe in um, who God says you are. And God says that all of us are amazing. Oh, powerful. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> and Mr. Carrier, back to you. Anything you want to say in parting? I just want to thank you guys for this amazing opportunity. I really appreciate it. And I want to just thank the kids for being here as well, because it takes a lot of confidence and courage to showcase your talents. But all in all, God bless you all. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful. And you can, of course, find her on YouTube and we'll share her link on the Caribbean Edge yeah. uh, Kids page, the Caribbean Edge page as well. And Auntie Sophie. <laughs> Auntie Dawn, what a blessing. What a blessing. I know my mom is going to be blessed today to just mm -hmm. watch this program. And I'm telling you, Auntie Dawn, it sounds cliche when we say educate motivate, inspire. This program did it all today. And every single one of you kids, you are individually a promise with a big capital P. Each of you are a promise. And I love when Dakaria says, if you don't like it, take it up with God. That's <laughs> my inspiration for today. So I have been blessed. Thank you all. And parents, continue to, continue to, what would I say, read to your children and encourage them. 
and continue to help them to build that confidence because we need each and every one of them in this world. All right. Thank you. Continue to do what you do best. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for celebrating Reggae Month with us, Black History Month with us. And I wish I could sing like the car because I would certainly sing out to the Bob Marley song. But thank you for tuning in to Storytime and Kids Your Park will be on measure. Thanks for tuning into the Caribbean Edge Kids and have a powerful week. One love. <laughs>